My people, my people, my people, welcome to the My People Podcast, where we talk with influencers in business, fashion, and lifestyle. I am your host, The Wealthy Guy. I'm a men's style expert, custom clothier, and published photographer. This week on episode eight of the My People Podcast, we are here with Alex Hooks. So let me tell you guys a little bit, or a lot, because he sent over a long bio, (laughs) y'all. Let me tell y'all about Alex Hook. So Alex is striving to live his best life and live it with style. So for him, his best life revolves around fashion, food, far off places, and a little bit of whatever else he can get his hands on. Channeling his love for storytelling, Alex adeptly weaves his passion for men's style and grooming into the fabric of his everyday life. Alex marries his passion for style and his eye for unique aesthetics with his professional skills in analytics, marketing, and sales operations to build his personal brand and carve out his niche in the menswear world. Alex works in sales at a pretty big company that makes products that you probably use every day. So having a knack for helping others look and feel their best Alex is seeking to turn his passions into his profession. Lead a day job, right? (laughs) Leveraging his background in architectural design, Alex continually pairs his keen eye for detail with his voracious curiosity. This has led to him working on an eclectic collection of projects, including modeling, curating a necktie collection, building a growing Instagram presence, and developing a men's concierge service. Alex Alex likes to stay engaged creatively. He enjoys searching for the perfect pieces to complement his wardrobe, eating as much great food as possible, planning his next getaway, or devouring the newest novel that lands on his bookshelf. Alex lives in the metro New York area and is a son, older brother, fiance, Howard University alum, and a member of Alpha Phi Alpha Fraternity Incorporated. Alex, my people, (laughs) welcome to the My People Podcast. Thank you, thank you, Rob. I appreciate you for having me. Yeah, man. So listen, so let me tell the, you know, the people that are listening. um, So I, I, before I met you, right, like I have been following you and I'm like, who is this guy with this beard? (laughs) (laughs) Who is this guy with this beard? And then I, then I saw your t-shirt. Um, which we'll talk about in a little bit. Oh, yeah, sure, and I sure. saw his T-shirt, and um, and then once I got to the Philly Flash Mob, and we'll talk some about that too. I met him in person, right? Um, and I right. said, Alex, you have to come on the podcast. So, um, so he's here, and now I'm here. He's now in I'm the here. building, yeah, man. Um, and I'm glad to have him here. Definitely, you know, he is someone that stands out to me, um, for his stylings. Um, you know, you can see him in a lot of images on Instagram with that, like the African print suit. That's the, that's the famous Look, one right there. Look, thank you. Thank <laughs> yeah. you. Thank you. Um, so yeah. So Alex, right. So, you know, you say you from the Metro New York area. Come on. Tell us a little bit about so, where you from. Yeah, man. Oh, for sure. So it's, if you drop a pin on 95, I have probably either been there or lived there at this point. Right. Um, Born in Brooklyn, New York, raised in Richmond, Virginia. Right. Um, so back and forth a lot during the summer. I had family up here in Brooklyn still, right. um, in Queens and throughout New York. So it's like very much used to come up here, I would say during the summers, winter right. breaks, things like that. Um, but then I went to school in DC. Yep. Um, after DC, I lived in Philly for a few years. So I feel like I kind of grew up in Philly. Right. Um, I met my fiance actually while I was in Philly and she was in Baltimore for Pharmacy school. So right. at that point, I was up and down 95 every other weekend. Right. Um, I lived in Connecticut for a little while. Um, <laughs> right. Right. Um, found some really good tacos up there, randomly enough. Right. Um, White Plains, New York. I spent mm. some time in Baltimore. Uh-huh. Um, I was in Thailand for two months. Yep. And now I'm in New Jersey. So right. I'm like Metro New York. Like I can see the city from my from my window. You right. know? So I'm like in Jersey, but right. close enough to the city to be dangerous. Well, that's that is you know that's 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 a little bit like a gypsy, you know that's like, <laughs> that's exactly. a lot of places. I just store secrets in my beard. right, that's but that's it. actually you know really cool because that is you've touched on a lot of East Coast places, right? Philly, mm-hmm. Connecticut, um, New York, New Jersey, Baltimore, 
Oh, did you say DC? I did. DC, I did. all of these yeah, pay, all of these places. Um, so th that is really cool, and they all have a different vibe. Very, very much so. Very different food scene. Um, I mean, definitely a very different fashion scene in each place. Oh, for sure. The basketball that gets played at the parks in the areas is also completely different, which is surprising. Yeah. <laughs> um, but yeah, no, I'm like, I'm grateful for the experiences. It's like I feel like each place is giving me so much because um, I think about like Richmond, right, for instance. Right. And growing up, it was like, you know, home home is always kind of, you know, home is home. Right, you know? right. So it's like, yeah, you know. Um, but it's interesting because a lot of some of my closest friends are from like the Metro Richmond area. You right. know what I mean? So it's like I've gone away and I still find a way to stay connected as much as possible. Right. So let me ask you this. What do you think has been your favorite place that you favorite. lived in? Um, I would honestly have to say Philly. Philly, I and it's one of those. I spent three years there. Right. It was the first place, you know, I was making a little money. Right. Um, he, right. I was like, I was all the way on my own. You know, all right. the bills were in my name. It was like, it was so there was that aspect, right? Like I grew up there. Right. Um, but it was oh, it was great. It was so great. Um, I pledged in Philly. Right. Um, I had a great friend group. I still have a great friend group and network in Philadelphia. Right. And the food scene in Philly to me is quietly underrated. I, it right. might not even be underrated anymore. Yeah. Um, but the food was great. I mean, it was very black, right. which I also love, like right. being able to kind of be with my people, right. you know? Um, yeah, I definitely felt that uh, when I was yeah, in Philly. See, yeah, yeah, exactly. yeah, And because before coming to Philly a few weeks ago, I hadn't been to Philadelphia since I was a kid. Yeah. Right. Yeah. So my grandmother's sister lived there mm -hmm. and we would all go down there. Yeah. And, and that was... But my experience this time was very different because I was a kid. Right, it wasn't right. like I can go places by myself, yeah, whereas yeah. this time I could. So it was a very different experience. And most of the time we were just in my aunt's house. Right, right, right? So right. it was a very different experience. And I'm trying to think, what did I eat? So I had a, a Philly cheese Okay, steak. where did you go? I went to Delisandro's. Okay, all right. Yeah, all right, yeah, yeah. Right. So I went to Delisandro's because um, someone that I know from Instagram, connected me with someone who was like yep. in town and yep. she's like, you have to meet this person. And I'm like, okay. And it was actually after the flash mob. Okay, so I was okay. like super tired, but I was like, nah, this is my people. She's trying to connect me with this person. I'm going to, you know, uh, meet right, up with right over Yeah, yeah, yeah. Absolutely. So yeah, so he like took me there and, um, you know, we had cheesesteaks yeah. and, you know, but I'm, I'm weird in the sense that I don't like um cold food and i don't <laughs> yeah, yeah look yeah i'm laughing because i'm the same way right yeah so i'm not the type of person to put like a whole bunch of like peppers and all of this mm -hmm. stuff on my mm -hmm. food as well as a whole bunch of condiments yep i kind of yep. stick to barbecue sauce or like <laughs> yeah this is why we're here like i'm very anti-mayo right. you know what i mean so I, um, I completely understand so yeah so i just had like the meat and the cheese yep. you know i yep. busted down it was good it was good so so well, good. what did you study in at, at howard yeah so i actually so i started funny enough i started undergrad as an architecture major yep um architecture and interior design mm -hmm. um was my double major for about a year and a half and then i switched to marketing um, right because it's like you know i, I love the architecture yeah you know, my my teacher in high school actually was like super old school so we did right. everything by hand very much like love the craft right you know so and it was a great experience it was like right. very exacting very personal um but when i got to undergrad it was so much more broad right um right. we did a lot of really cool things i enjoyed it um but it was a five-year program you right. know like i literally dove right into architecture so i was like you know i stepped back right and i knew like you know i always pictured myself in a suit right more or right, less right. um for whatever reason i always picture myself kind of having that flexibility to that like i kind of have now in the corporate space right so when i looked at what architecture looked like i was like you know not really sure what the market is. Right. I'll look at marketing because, yep. you know, I thought it would allow me to be creative. And I was right. I was wrong, but I was right in a, in a very different kind of way. <laughs> right, like, I right, love right. the, like, psychology of yep. it um, and kind of telling stories yep. with analytics a lot of times. Yep. And, yeah, man, it was, it was, like, a really solid transition because I was able to take my, like, architecture experience, that eye for detail, yep. that eye for design, kind of always having your audience in mind. Yep. And it really parlayed well in the architecture. And I actually was able to get into things like event planning on campus and some different ambassadorships, right. which ended up like, again, being right in my wheelhouse. Not exactly what I thought it would be, but right. it lent itself well to like my interests and some of the skill sets I've developed. Right, right. So you happy with what you, you study? Oh, yeah, man. Yeah, man. Absolutely. Yeah, I mean, I think, I think anyway, it's certain majors, I think 
in general, right, college is a place to prepare you for adulthood. Absolutely. Right? Absolutely. Like, it build relationships, mm-hmm. you learn how to do things, you yes. know, at, yes. on time and all of that stuff. But unless you're like, you know, going to go to be a doctor, it's something very specific, you know, yep. like specific, yep. it doesn't necessarily matter what you get the degree in. Oh, absolutely. Yeah, yeah absolutely. Yeah, yeah, because you can do tons of different jobs. Exactly. It's all they want to know is that you got the piece of exactly. paper. Right, and right. It, and ended up being like a really, you know, lucky circumstance that I ended up with the major that I liked. You know right. what I mean? I found some work, like I found work that aligned. And I was like, oh, this is actually interesting. Right. So it's, you know, it's, it's actually, I, I feel pretty lucky. Because right. to your point, it's, you you know, you're 17, 18. You know what I mean? Yeah. It's like, it's kind of a crapshoot. Like you're asking people who were just asking permission to go to the bathroom to right. decide what they want to do for the rest of their life. And it's right. like, you know, I just turned 27 and I'm still like, I mean, you know, I think I kind of know, right. but I'm not hundred percent. Right. So it's, I appreciated the experience to, to your point, kind of like spread my wings. Right. You know what I mean? Right. To build those connections, to like have deliverables, right? Like I had classes to go to, but right. I didn't have to, you know what I mean? Right. Like you kind of, it allowed me to really, like I said, flex my muscles, but right. at the same time, really decide what worked for me and kind of explore those curiosities. And right. thankfully, things kind of worked out. What was it like? Because I didn't go to uh, HBCU, yeah. right? I went to school here in in uh, in in the city. Mm-hmm. What was it like to go to HBCU? Um, it was it was comfortable and challenging in mm-hmm. a way that only like home can be, if that makes sense. So like, right. so for instance, like so for me. I don't usually like to leave the house in like my do rag, right? Just right. in general, that's just me, right? <laughs> and I know that do rags are a thing now, but right. I'm like, you know, I'm, I'm about to go out the house. I'm gonna take my do rag off, right. you know, put on some clothes. But at Howard, right, it was that comfortable where it was like, yo, you're home. Like, I don't have to worry about being that guy in the do rag. Right. You know what I mean? Right. Odds are there were tons of other people in do rags, right. right. and that was like, you know, like on a day to day, it was things like that, but. Howard was, and I say it was challenging because it's like when people are comfortable, right. that's when you can now be challenged. Right. Like, yo, you're my homie. Like, hey, we're here together. We're chilling. We're relating. We're going through this same struggle. Right. I'm going to push you to be better. Right. And it was like everywhere I turned, it was like, you know, it was funny. One of the things that they did during our orientation was, um, you know, we had this big auditorium. We all go in there right. as freshmen. It's like we have a speaker. One of the questions that they asked, like, who here was class president? Right. Who here was, you know, best dressed in right. high school? Who, you know, these superlatives, these boxes that we all kind of checked individually right, right. from our disparate, you know, high schools where it was like, I was the best dressed. Right, guy. right. You were student body president and you were the singular person, right. you know, at your school. And now you're surrounded by other best dressed, other class presidents, other SGA, you know what I mean? Right, so right. it's like it level sets very early on that was like, right. wow, you're here, you're comfortable, you're home. Right. But this is a home of excellence. So it's right, like, right, right. here, be comfortable, explore. But we have this expectation that you're going to continue to thrive with the, you know, right. with the people around you who have also been thriving. Right. And I mean, it was a ton of fun. Like right. Washington, D.C. is Washington, D.C. Is D.C. So yep. there was that. And I mean, like Howard, Howard is a really unique experience. Like I genuinely yep. think, you know, I, you're going to get education wherever you go. Right. Like whether it's Joe Schmo Community College, right. Harvard, everywhere in between. But I do think that that experience that you get at Howard, and I think at a lot of other HBCUs, right. is like really what is the valuable part. Like I don't think I would be the Alex that I am today without having without one having one. Oh yeah, yeah absolutely. absolutely. Um, so let me ask you this because you're, you know, I'm seasick right now from your waves. <laughs> <laughs> thank you, man. Thank you. Thank you. So so you know you use a silky do rag you use the like velvety one what's it's, your it's, what's your do rag i'm very old school uh-huh. like i'm i have a good old silky right. you know what i mean <laughs> i have i have a couple like i have my workout silky i right. have my nighttime silky i have right. my i'm riding in the car silky silky and that's what i do i keep it i'm it's one do rag at a time right. i'm not a big stocking cap guy right but right. it's like it's weird i stumbled upon like this waiver culture like this uh-huh. whole little it's like not even little it's like a whole subsection of the internet right. seems like and it's like you got guys wearing two, three do-rags at a time. I'm like, oh yeah. I feel soup. Like my brush is probably like eight years old. I'm not gonna right. lie. So right. it's like I'm I'm like, you know, I'm, I'm get my laughs in every right. night right. and that's that's it. Right. Um, so what what do you feel about the like velvety looking do-rag? I mean that's it's... like the more like yeah, man. dressed up do-rag. <laughs> <laughs> and it's like I, and it's it's so weird how fast it happens when you go from being like the cool kid wearing a velvety durag to like right. the washed up guy talking about velvety durags. Right, right. And it's like, wow, it just happened. And I'm like, I I, I tried one on, like my little brother wears them. Right. They're super hot. 
Right. They're very hot. They're like book socks for your head. Uh, you know what I mean? Like, you know, yeah, like the book. Yeah. You remember, like, we all had to get like book covers for uh-huh. our like science textbooks. Yep. That's what the material, like, that's stretchy. It's uh-huh. not super breathable. Right. So it's like, I mean, it looks cool. Right. I would wonder, you know, older guy, Alex, yep. who like, drinks water and eats vitamins like what is that circulation doing like your scalp you know what i mean like is that healthy right. so that's what i'm wondering but i'm also like the curmudgeon is like i'm gonna stick with my silky and i'm gonna let the young guys do what the young guys right do. right mm-hmm. right yeah if it ain't broke don't <laughs> exactly, fix it. Yeah, exactly yeah yeah no that makes that makes a lot of sense yeah, but right. yeah but no i haven't worn a do-rag in a very long time so i'm always Could asking people me. about <laughs> right so I'm always asking people, like, you know, when they have waves, like, do they use a silky or do Absolutely. they use the velvety? Because, mm-hmm. like, I don't know. For me, I just, but, you know, the thing about, like, uh, you know, having a bald head is my hair still grows. But if it grows out to a point, right, then my sunroof is going to be open, <laughs> you know, right? So then I'm looking like I'm not looking good, right? So sometimes... <laughs> So sometimes I think like, well, maybe I can like, you know, put on a do-rag in between that like head shavings, but it just doesn't feel right to put on the do-rag and not be putting it on for the weight. Right, you're not trying right. to appropriate the culture. I understand, I understand. Look, we gonna have to you know what we gotta do. Gotta get you one of those, uh, the beard, the beard bonnets. Yes. So you don't feel left. Honestly, right. folks have been like jokingly threatening to get it for me for like two Christmases. Right. So I'm like holding out, but right. we might have to go ahead and make it happen. Right, yeah, so that I can kind of be, you know, feel, feel right. closer right. to the culture. Because yeah, now, nah, I, I, I don't feel right putting on a do-rag. So let's talk a little bit about Instagram. Yeah. So where did your Instagram, so your Instagram name is The Full Windsor. Where did that come from? Um, So funny enough, actually, so I told you, a lot of my cousins are from New York. Right. So whenever they came to Virginia during the summers, it was like, that's when I got hip to all of the latest and greatest. Right. right? Um, like I was raised very conservative, religious background. So, you know, right. I'm like looking at them, like they wore the cool clothes. They right. were hip to the trends. Um, so the summer before undergrad, before I started freshman year, actually, like, you know, Twitter was starting to bubble. Right. And, you know, I don't know if you knew, because you're from New York, right? I'm like you grew New up York, in the city. Yeah. So like, mm-hmm. I don't know if you remember when like Twitter names used to be really aggressive. Like, <laughs> I get women, you know what I mean? <laughs> Pockets super fat, you know what I mean? Like, and it was just right. like that. So I'm like, you know, I'm, I'm sitting there with my cousins, we brainstorming. Right. So I had a couple of those names, you know, like, I think one of my tech signatures was like, the cake boss. So right. this, again, like, you know right, what I mean? Right, like, my cousins are very Brooklyn, right? right? So I'm like, I'm like, ah, you know, I get, I'm getting these tweets off that summer before college. And I'm like, thinking of who I want to be in college. I'm like, ah, that's not me. You know, I'm not, I'm not the cake boss. That's not, right. that's not me. Um, but at the time, I was like, again, being in this like conservative background, I was wearing suits like three times a week. Right. Um, I had, I was the guy tying tie knots in the full Windsor, not was like my go-to. Like I used to be a really big, beefy, you know, with thick dimple. Mm-hmm. Um, and I was like, oh, the full Windsor, you know, and it's like, you know, historically the full Windsor knot exudes confidence. It's right. one that like leaders wear very like powerful time knot, takes up a lot of space. Right. So for me, I was like, that feels really appropriate. You know what I mean? Like it's a name that speaks to my like style interests, my sartorial, you know, nature. Right. But it was like very confident, strong. Right. But yeah, man, no, that's, that's, that's cool. That's, I didn't, I, I never know really where some people's Instagram yeah, names yeah. come from. So I'm always curious, you know, how people came up with their like Instagram name. Yeah. And, and I don't know why I didn't think that it meant that. Yeah. Right. Like, it's like, and the thing about it is like, I give, I give 17 year old Alex credit. Cause you know, that name, it kind of stuck. It right, was like, right. um, a, it could have been a whole lot of other things. Right, I'm right. telling you, like I, one of my usernames was like Deep Waves ninety two. Right. <laughs> Again, so it's like it's a lot of growth right, that happened right, before, right, but right. it's like, yeah, no, it was. Um, it felt right. It, it definitely is one that I'm like, I've changed a lot of things, and I go back and forth on a lot, but right. like the full Windsor is like very, very much part of the brand. Right. Yeah. No, for sure, and definitely the beard yes. is a part yes. of the brand. Yes. So, like, when did you start growing the beard? Um. As soon as I got to college, like right. I, um, cause it was like, again, like my dad he used to cut my hair. Right. So it wasn't, you know, like when you have a barber, right. Every right. couple of weeks, you can kind of get away. Look, dad, we haven't been in the barber shop. I'm gonna let this peach fuzz grow in. Right. Right. But it was like, once I got like hair that was visible, it was gone. Like right. I was, I was getting a haircut. <laughs> um, so I got to undergrad and I was like, you know, I'm about to do what I want to do. Right. So I, I started with the chin strap. Right. Um, and I think it was, it got to a point where I was getting haircuts. 
like every week. Right. And my skin was really sensitive. So right. it was like, you know, the chin strap is smooth, right. but you're getting it razored every week. And yep. it's just like my skin wasn't agreeing, especially like under my jaw. Right. So I was like, I'm gonna take a break at first. And then I was like, oh, well, it's growing. Right. I didn't really think I could grow it. And it started. And I was like, okay, I'll keep it. Right. Um, and the first, I probably grow my beard now like four separate times. Right. The first one was terrible. Uh -huh. First beer was trash. Um, I was using like plastic picks. Right. I was using pink lotion. On my beard. <laughs> um, so you know my my, my right. pores were in a terrible yeah. place. Um, but it was shining. You know, right. I had some luster. Um, so it's like that was the first time I grew it in underground. You know, I was broke. It was. Right. I'm picking it out, and when it's dry, it was bad. It was yeah. real. A lot of sweat ends. Grew it out a couple more times, and right. it was about that place. And then shameless plug to my fiance Awi, mm -hmm. who. After the like third time I grew my beard, she was like, you realize that your beard is like hair on your right. face. So you should treat it that way. So it's like just little things like right. wooden combs, only really like styling it when it's moist, you know, like out of the right. shower, right. Um, keeping it moisturized. Right. So it's like after that, like I would say this beard is probably circa 2016. Yep. I cut it. That was the last time I saw my cheeks was right. uh, January, February That's 2016. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but it's, it's honestly... I've had a lot of people ask, oh, is it itchy? Is it hot? Right. No problem. Because, like, I wash it and right. I'm like, it's so well conditioned that it's like, right. honestly, it's probably a little shadier from my neck than right. it is hot. Right. But it, it doesn't look like uh, it's hot. It looked like somebody could take their fingers and put, you know? <laughs> and you would be like surprised it, how many people try. Right. You would right, be surprised. Yeah, no, but it doesn't look like bunched up and I it, it looks that. like. Uh, uh, like porous, yeah. right? Like you know, like it's something can like go through it. Yeah, I yeah. That. So I, I can I understand that. when you say it's not it's not hot because it's not like all like yeah yeah yeah. But uh, yeah, no, that's that's the challenge of having something like unique. Mm -hmm. People want to touch it, right? Like Bro. yeah, yeah. People want to touch it, and um, it's like it's it's. It, I kind of have to remind people. Every now, like when I can tell it again, I'm like, you know, this is like right by my face. Like this, right. my mouth is like right, right here. You know what I mean? Like yeah. I eat, you know, like I don't, again, I don't know when the last time you washed your hands. Right. Like this is, this is a lot of. Yeah. yeah. And that's, that's the main thing to me with people like touching me is the dirty hands. Like, right. Like, like and why would yeah. someone want, like, just feel like it's okay to touch your face. Yeah. Right. Like it's yeah. one thing if you're like, go ahead. <laughs> invite to touch, right? Like invite right, to right. touch, but oh, let me j and they are already reaching you out. Would be to, surprised. Yeah, yeah, no, yeah. that's that's nuts. Um, yeah, so you know, got the beard, had the beard since mm -hmm. around you know 2016. It's looking lustrous, right? <laughs> Thank you. So you know, how did the you know talk a little bit about the t-shirts and yeah. what gave you the idea? Um, you know, for for that t-shirt. Yeah, man. So I'm a really, really big NBA fan. Right? Yeah. I'm like, you know, I watch the playoffs. Right. I'm, a, I'm a big LeBron fan, by the way. It's just so you know where <laughs> I stand. Um, so it's like, you know, I'm, I'm watching the finals this year. And right. of course, Kawhi Leonard kind of took the league by storm again. You know, right. he's back from um, injury. And one of the interesting things about Kawhi is that there's just not a lot that we know about him because he's very enigmatic. You know what right. I mean? He doesn't right. speak to the media a ton. And this story came out during the finals that, like, during college, like, you know, Kawhi, very quiet, very reserved guy. But you could hear him kind of, like, talking to himself during the game saying, right. like, poor man gets paid. Like, right. he would get rebounds and just, like, little, like, you know, one-off right. euphemisms right. that he kind of said to himself that I'm, like, one, very relatable as a right. fellow basketball player. Because right. you got to, you end up talking to yourself on the court. Right. And then, two, I'm like, yeah, that's clever as hell. Right. Um, so, I'm, like, talking to myself. Oh, I was actually literally about to buy one of his shirts that uh -huh. said, board man gets paid. Right. And, again, shameless plug to Alvi, my, my pseudo creative director. Uh -huh. um, the, you know, shadow. The right. shadow that uh, drives the man. And she was like, you know what would be really good? Beard man gets paid. And I was like, right. that should be on the shirt. Right. And now it's on the shirt. Right. So do people understand what it means? Yes. So it's like, do you have like? I guess my question is, do you have to be a basketball fan? Because I didn't understand what it meant. It is a like, niche. You know? It is like a, <laughs> so. It's like a very you know, it's the cross section of guys with beards and yep. NBA fans. So it's right, like right. I've worn this shirt out like three or four times, right. and I usually get one at least one very emphatic. That's a great shirt. Right. Like, right. And you can tell that that guy watches basketball. Right. And. Literally, I think if I've gotten five or six compliments, right. four of those guys have had beards. Right. So it's just like they, they if you know, you know. They, they get, yeah, yeah exactly, they get exactly. it. But I thought that, you know, the idea was cool, right? Mm -hmm. And I'm like, anytime people like, 
put their ideas out there and it's like, let me try to make me some money while doing okay. it right and kind of right. like furthering the brand and things like that. I'm like, I'm all I'm all for it. Yeah, um, you know, that. like I'm all for it. Like I was telling my nephew, you know, I was like, you can easily start a t-shirt business. Easy. You know, like super, super, easy. super, super easy. Um, so and it kind of it goes back to the conversation we were having when you were setting up. It's like it, that barrier sometimes of like it seems like a lot, but sometimes you just right. gotta take that first step. Right. And it's literally like, you know, and it was all of, I had all these objections, well, what about inventory? Am I gonna have to buy these shirts ahead of time? And there's so right. many memes of like working and figuring these things out, like drop shippers make it super easy. Exactly. You know what I mean? Like and things like that, just from like having a good network, because I have a, I'm trying to build my creative network. Right, with, you know, right, people right. like creatives around me. And one of my homegirls was like, "Yeah, I use a dropshipper. I don't keep, you know, I don't keep inventory. I'm not going to the post office." Right, and yeah, then it's no like way. it's literally that. That's it. Oh yeah, you know? yeah. Meets like well, my shirt too. Same thing, right? Like all I had to do was make the shirt, literally, and everything else is taken care of. Yeah. Like. By the dropshipper. Yep. You know, I have no people come here sometimes and they're like, oh, let me see, you know, let me you got a shirt in my size. I'm like, uh no, I don't. <laughs> like, I don't just I'm not just right. sitting out right. around with boxes of t-shirts right. in right. my like, house. I'm not yeah. the Avon lady. Right, yeah, right, no. yeah. So, but yeah, no, that I think that that's awesome. Um, let's talk about the Philly flash mob. Yeah, man. Right, so great event. Philly Flash Mob that was like what August third. Yeah, man. Yeah, August yeah. third, and almost yeah, I know. Yeah, yeah, the time really flies. Um, but you know, I had spoken to Dre. You know, mm -hmm. the guy who runs Black Men's Wear, yep. and he was like, "I'm coming to you know, coming to Philly. It's the closest that we're gonna get to New York. Yeah. Like, you should come down." And I'm like, "Absolutely! Like, I'm gonna be in the building mm -hmm. like for that." Um, so, you know, like planned the weekend and like came down, um, you know, my, my first thing was looking at the weather that morning right, right, and realizing right. that it was going to be 90 degrees. So, you know, <laughs> I, I stayed in a, I stayed in an Airbnb close to the, um, to the museum. Yeah. Um, so I took an Uber over, but as soon as I stepped out the Uber, like I just started like sweating bro, and I'm like, bro. ooh, this is serious. <laughs> <laughs> Cause that Philly heat, it's like that, you know, that mid-Atlantic heat will hit you like a warm hug. Right. You know? Yeah. Like, uh, like it was humid and hot. And you had the double breasted on. It's yes. Like, it's like, so, so you everything just, was just like <laughs> sausage was in cooking. there. Yeah. Yes. Like, yeah, like packed up in there. And I was just like, oh man, this is yeah. this th yeah, yep. this is this is yep. not right. You know, but I was like, you know, be because I have been in those situations before, yep. right? Like I lived in Hong Kong for almost three years and the heat and humidity there is, I can only you come out and you imagine. are going to be sweating straight away. So I understand like colors and things like that to ensure that yeah. you you know, aren't looking crazy right, because right. people were really like sweating through their suits and their bro, shirts and everything bro. else, you know? I, look, so. I completely, and as like a, a sweater myself, right. I completely understand. Cause it was like, that's the challenge with suiting in general, especially in the summer. It's right. like, you know, you have your linen, which is good, you know, for like sit down things. Right. You know, we were going right. to be out and about posing, right. like you're going to be crinkly as hell. Right. Um, so this is one of those, like, because even myself, I was like, okay, so it's looking like it's going to be 90. Right. And which means it might rain. You know what I mean? It was like right. a chance of rain. It was So I actually, I'm glad I broke, I let my ankles loose that day. Right. Um, but it's just like, I think summertime is always the most interesting when it comes to suiting. Because right. it's like, regardless of whether it's linen, whether it's white, you know what I mean? If you got to put a jacket on top of a shirt, it's going to be hotter. You, it's you know going to be mean? hotter. It's, it's going to be oof. hotter. So for the people who are listening, you know, because we like Philly Flash Mob, like, right. well, what's that? Is that a gang? Was that a group? <laughs> what, what's going on with that? Right. So it is a, uh, so black menswear, they go to different cities and they, you know, bring black men together, you yep. know, that like to dress up. Um, and photograph them yep. um, as a as a group. So they, you know, it, it started in Dallas. They did Dallas. They've done DC. DC. Yep. They've done um, where's some of the other places? I think. I mean, I, is it? Did they do Chicago? There was one in Chicago. I think if I'm Chicago. Not 
Yeah. Um, there might have been one in Houston. But anyway, they go around yep. and yep. they, you know, they 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 do it. But, you know, I'm biased. I think ours is going to be lit. It's about it, to be the it has best no one. It has no choice, um, man. But, you know, shout out to Black Men's Wear. Absolutely. Because, Absolutely. you know, when Black people get together or Black people are organizing something... A lot of times, the first thought in your head might be like, "Wait a minute, this is gonna be unorganized. Right. This gonna this right. gonna be something." But how late can I be? It was yeah. very organized, very very organized. Yep. I like, completely agree. From yeah, like from, and I was very very impressed with like just the whole thing, and yeah. I was like, "Yes, yeah, yes." And the turnout, man, like it's always encouraging too to see like you know. Things that you, because I think that it's so interesting now, because so many of the things we follow are like in the internet. You know right, what I mean? Seeing right. things online and then being able to see things come to life in person was like super humbling. You know what yeah. I mean? Like to know that, like to be in that space with, right. what was it, 60, 60 or so guys? It, it was like, it was, it was a good number. It was, it was definitely, a, I feel like 50 or so. Right. Was like there. it was yeah. to see all these other guys suited and booted, kind right. of with similar interests, doing similar things that you're right. doing. And then even being in that space and then having folks like you, like, yo, I follow your Instagram. Like, this right. is, like that to me is like, that's, that made that made it worth right. the price of admission. You know what I mean? Right. Like, it was worth the trip down. And it's like, it's always super invigorating to right. kind of be around folks and kind of, to be honestly, sh shamelessly kind of take some of their energy right. and, and go back to what you're doing. Knowing yeah. that it's like, oh, you're, you're not alone. You have a, a little bit of a community. Right. You know what I mean? And it's like. The fact that they're creeping closer and closer to New York to me is just like it's only a matter of time. Listen, it's it only is, a listen, of time. They have to. Yeah. Dre, if you are listening, right, right. you have to. But I already told him this. Oh, yeah, said, we'll see you in you New York. You absolutely have to come yeah. to New York, right? Like it will be so lit. But you know, when we were on the on the stairs, yeah. that to me was it was a very emotional experience. Mm -hmm. You know, like, because I'm like, wow. We're like all up here. Everybody is like suited and booted. Everybody, all flavors of chocolate. Yep. The way that people were like just stopping and staring and yes. taking pictures Hooting, and doing and videos yeah. and just like really just proud. Yeah. Right? Like yeah. to see us there like that, that just really like, it really touched me. And I was like, man, I wonder what it looks like yes. from their view. Yeah. You know, yeah, so man. that's why I'm super excited for everything to like come out Same. so that Same. we can like see yeah. what it looked like. Because the, the iPhone shots so far have been solid. And it's yeah, just listen, like, they have they've been good. They yeah. have. So, I mean, especially to your point, like with the level of coordination that was going on. Right. Like, I'm, I'm really trusting their eye just from the way that folks were moving kind of behind the scenes. Right. You know what I mean? Right. You could see that there was a vision there that they were like kind of. Slicing and dicing the group so that we can have like maximum synergies, you know what right, I mean? Like, right. hey, that small group there, great pinstripe, you know, like all of that. Like, I'm excited to see what the final product is. Right? Like. Yeah, no, I think it's it's going it's yeah. going to look like yeah. really really good. But you know, already from some of the images that have been shared from people's phones, yeah, it's always it's sort of it's like, yeah, yep. something is coming. Yep. You is. know, I see people commenting like. What, what was y'all doing? Like, what's going on? Right, Something's right, coming, right. right? So people know that something is coming mm -hmm. because a lot of the pictures are in the same, you know, in the same area, yep. right? So they're like, yep. okay, all these different pictures, these guys are are there. So like, watch out. I mean, by the time this airs, they the, it will be out. So yeah, everybody yeah. will like see, but it's about to be fire it really is look <laughs> I, I'm, I'm updating my bio the right. book and it's all gonna be there so right. when it comes out <laughs> you right. know where to find me Everything. absolutely yeah absolutely. no because people are definitely going to you know they're going to uh people automatically look to see who's in the picture yep. go to check out their page so you have to always make sure your yeah, page yeah, especially the, at least the top two rows is 100%. is legit because 100%. that you know, you get two rows. Look, people stay come, ready so you don't got to get ready. Exactly. Okay? Right. You get two rows. People come and they look. Okay, okay. They tap. So, all right. I'll, you get a follow, right? If but, that. If that. So look. If yeah. that. Yeah. yeah. So, but yeah, no, that was an awesome experience. Agreed. You know, definitely your suit definitely stood out. Thank you. You know, um, even on the pictures that I post, so many people are... Like, where can I get the suit from? Where can I get the suit from? Where can I get the suit from? You know, like, so, 
you might want to sell those suits. Look, right. man. And look, it's okay. Look, it's coming. Just wait on it. Right. Wait on right. It. Exactly. Um. So what else? So we talked about the beard, yeah. right? Yeah. So like you know, I always try to incorporate like you know, grooming yeah. into it, right? So talk to people about their beards, but then also talk to people about like their skin. So I know For you sure. mentioned your fiance. So we credit the fiance with the skin. She, yeah. She's the one that puts yeah. you on to yeah, different man. things. She keeps me glowing. Um, yep. I'm not gonna lie. So it's like, I'm not gonna hold you. My, the bathroom is probably my favorite place. Right. I'm like, I'm notoriously slow in the bathroom. Right. Um, but it's just like, for me, it's like, I just, I don't know, I like that time. Right. It's like the shower, you know, you take that 15, 20 minutes in the shower. Right. That's when I have my best ideas. You know what right. I mean? I pick this outfit in the shower. Right. And then it's like, I get that next 15 minutes to just like, okay, you know, my face is good. Right. You know what I mean? Like, right. I'm moisturized. Right. Like, and it's just, I just, I don't know. I just appreciate that time with myself. Yeah. You know, like I'll, depending on the, like the mood, I'll like throw some tunes on. Right. I listen to a lot of audio books. So it's like, I can really kind of set that mood and get my day going right. in the bathroom. And then as far as like products themselves, I try to keep things pretty simple. Yeah. Um, like my face routine, like I have sensitive skin, yep. but it's very cooperative. So right. I've been like, I'm very fortunate to not need a ton. Right. Um, right. I'd use like a basic cream cleanser, mm -hmm. whichever one I'm getting for free for whoever right. I'm working at. Um, so right now I'm using right. uh, Noxzema cream cleanser as like my base. Right. Um, I use a St. Ives coffee energizing scrub as my exfoliator every other night. Yep. Um, during the day, I use a like a little like floral aloe vera water mist yeah you know, like, that's you know, the mario badescu look yeah man, exactly exactly actually and like so we yes. have it in like grapefruit we have a green one and yeah. like it's a few different yeah colors, i use so. the orange one yeah yeah yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. so i use that and then during the day i use aesop's um they have a like fantastic face yep. moisturizer and then at night i use a um what is it it's called rose it's rose hip face oil at night yep and i use a um skin mask from Kiehl's. Right. Yep. Okay, so you got a pretty good regimen. You know, like, yeah. I, people don't know about the Mario Badescu. Yeah, like, man. Like, that it's, stuff is great. It it really it really is, and it's like, it it honestly makes me wonder how ashy I used to look. Because right. I'm like, this. I was not moisturizing. Like, I used right. to use just Nivea on my face. Like, it's like, oh, I'm gonna throw some water on there, right. hit the Nivea, right. with that pink oil, just clog pores <laughs> all day. And now I'm out here, you know what I mean? Like, I'm toning. <laughs> I'm washing twice a day. It's, it's a game changer. It's a game changer. But it's like, again, like, I like being in tune with, like, myself. Because if I'm not, who right. else is going to be? You know what oh, I mean? Yeah. So it's like, if my skin isn't right or if my hair is dry, I'm going right. to dry. So I like yeah. to, that's why the bathroom is so important to me. I get to take that time to make sure I'm where I want to want to be. Right. Um. But yeah, man, no, it's definitely, it's definitely working. You know, I always ask people what they use to yeah. take care of their skin. And some people are like just soap and water. Some people go down a whole long list. Yeah. Like my list is like a whole long list, you know, but I, it's some of the, you know, kind of like the same types of things that like yeah. you use as well. Mm -hmm. Um, that, that coffee scrub though, like I got some samples from Lush. Oh I love yeah. Lush. Yeah. I love yeah. Lush. I got some samples from Lush and, and that one is actually, uh, you know, it's good for your face and your body. And uh -huh. it kind of like, okay. because of the, like caffeine, it yeah. like, right, right, right. Yeah, like gives you a little, little, little boost. Yeah. But that's why I like the face, the, yeah. the face scrub. Yeah, yeah, but I don't, I don't, I normally, I don't, I don't drink coffee anyway. Same. Like I'm a, I'm tea, a tea person. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah, yeah so, yeah. so I wouldn't mess with, you know, I don't know much about coffee because yeah. I, I just don't, I don't drink it. So what, what, what is like, you know, like what's next for you? Yeah, like, man. What do you, you know, where you see yourself going, where you want to yeah. do? Um, you know, honestly, I hope for one, I can continue getting opportunities like this. Like right. these are, cause a lot of the time for me, even with like my, like my Instagram or whatever, it's, I, I really like to think that it's, it comes off as pretty authentic. I like to right. try to, when it comes to content and photos and yeah. things like, I really make a concerted effort to make sure that the things I'm posting are things I like right. actually do. Right. You know what I mean? Like mm -hmm. products I actually like, things right. I would actually use. Right. Um, so really for me, I want like I would love for my next kind of like immediate steps to be like similar to these. Keep right. being progressive, kind of incremental growth. Right. You know, seeing like this is a podcast this week. Maybe I'll be on the news. Right. You, and and you know, a couple no, more. Listen, you gotta um, put it out there. You gotta say it every look, day. You know? <laughs> um, but then I'm also thinking like in like that next like three to five years, you know, like I've been tracking kind of where my analytics are going. Right. And how my numbers have been moving over the last few years. Right. And I feel like 
if they keep going at this rate, I'll be in a really good place right. as far as like an audience and really right. figuring out how to, you know, add value. And it's like, so my professional background, like I said, is in uh, marketing and sales. Right. And I'm in this place now where, you know, everything is moving digital. Amazon's right. taking over the world. Right. And working so closely with brands that are becoming more digital right. as I'm building my own digital brand. Right. I really want to try to find that intersection. Right. And, you know, whether that's in the corporate space, whether that's me doing it on my own, like that is where I would love to see myself in like three to five. You know right. what I mean? Like making these pictures work for me. Right. Um, but then also taking these insights that I'm gleaning along right. the way. Right. And one, being able to add value at a very high level, whether it's yep. for my brand or others. Right. Right. Yeah. And that's the value of that marketing yeah, uh, man. degree, because you'd be surprised how, or, or maybe not how many people don't know how to manage their Instagram yep. from an analytics perspective. Yep. And that yep. is really how you manage Cause the Instagram. That's because that's where the value is. Like, yeah. you know, hey, everybody, anybody can take fire photos. Right. But what, one, what story are you trying to tell? Right. And what what story does the your audience tell? Like, you're right. the makeup of your audience, you know, right. the frequency of their visits. Like, how are you driving engagement? Right. And that's the type of thing. That's why I'm like, really in being in this corporate space where I'm hearing these conversations on the back end of like, hey, what's important? What are we right. trying to drive? Who's this audience? Right. Being able to meet these brands and these potential, right. you know, these potential partners with right. that information is what sets, you know, a good picture taker from a brand, you know, from someone who right. is really doing their thing right. online and like kind of adding Oh yeah, idea. because anybody that looks decent, that can right. put a put on a suit can take a picture. Exactly. Right. But it's very difficult to build community around mm -hmm. you. Mm -hmm. You know, like that part of it takes takes skill yeah. to get people to buy into your brand. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. Because, and, that's, and that's why I mean personally, like, that's why I'm so big on authenticity. Like yeah. it's always been like I'm it is the most humbling thing getting featured and like having people like recognize me from Instagram because right. <laughs> for me it's like I still feel like I'm genuinely just getting dressed. You know what I mean? Like right. I just so happened to get a photo that day. You know right. what I mean? Like right. and sure it's great going to photo shoots, but again they're still my clothes. It's right. me putting on my pants one leg at a time the right. same way I've been doing. You know right. what I mean? Since my mom was picking my clothes. Right. So it's like to have people recognize me for it is like is already I'm satisfied, like table stakes. I'm in a good place because it's right. just like that's really dope. Right. You know? So do people like recognize you like on the street? Have it has happened. People? It has <laughs> happened. And it is it is never not the weirdest and coolest thing at the same time. At the time. same time, um, right. Like I'll never forget the first time someone recognized me and they bought us drinks right. at a bar in DC. Right. We were out having a good time. It's like Sunday fun day, right. post brunch. And it was like, yo. You're that dude from the gram. Right, right. And next thing I know, he bought me a couple of drinks. Right. I'm like, you are absolutely right. I am that guy from the gram. And I, I prefer whiskey. So thank right, you. Right, <laughs> but right. no, man, it's 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 really, really cool. Like, and it's yeah. a like I said, it's a super humbling thing. Cause for me, a lot of the things that I do, like outside of fashion and getting dressed, right? right like my goal is to always kind of like make things a little easier, make things better for the people who come after me. Like I have a younger right, brother. Right, um, right. I'm in a couple of different fraternities. So like mentorship and like kind of being able to lead the way for folks is important to me because right. I know I wouldn't be here anywhere like without the people who were before me kind of taking the time to pour into me. Oh, so for it's sure. like, for you sure. know, if it's, hey, where do you get your shirts from? Or, hey, would you mind looking over my resume or helping right. coach me for this interview? Right. That's the type of thing that I, I really enjoy to do. Right. So like if people recognizing me helps me do that for more people, right. then I'm all for it. Yeah, no, you definitely got to pay it forward. But that is one thing that I am trying to get used to myself, you know, because the beard is so distinct that if you see me, right, you right. like that's him, exactly. you know, exactly. and, <laughs> that's him, exactly, yeah, that's, exactly that's him. Is. And people like, you know, while I was in Philly, like people stopped me when I was in, at uh, Delisandro's. Yep. Yep. Somebody was like, "Hey, man," and that, and you know, that's my thing. Like, say hey. I don't I don't know about people touching me like Are straight up the back, you know what I'm saying? So but yep, I just yep. I just roll out I would never say to somebody, hey, what, what are you doing? Right, don't right, touch me. Right. Um but yeah, so you know, he's like, hey man, you don't know me, but you know, I follow you on Instagram right. and you know, I love you, da 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 da. And I was like, thank you. You right. know, and it happened like a few other times, and then it happens here in like New York too. Yeah. And and still, I'm just always just really caught off guard because yeah. I look at myself as a regular person. 
Right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So it's yeah. like always like, oh, shoot. Like I was eating empanadas, right? I went out one night and I was like sitting with a friend eating empanadas. And this guy stopped him, like stopped in his track and was like, oh, my God, it's you. The wealthy guy, I love you. Like, can I give you a hug? And I was just like, okay, like, finish, you know, finish chewing. Right? Yeah, yeah. So it's something that yeah. you know, definitely, um, that I have to get used to. Yep. But it does yep. feel good for people to like recognize you. But Super also, funny. you have to be always kind of like be on your p's and q's. It is right in, it in is. public because you never know. Who's there watching? You never know who got their phone up. Right, right. You know what I'm saying? Right. So it's it's that's that's the Head to on me the, swivel, man. I the, the challenge of it. So a uh, couple other quick questions. At what age did you learn how to tie a tie? Whew. Well, how old was I when I was tying my I was probably like eight, eight, nine, and then around probably like 12 13 is when i was like okay now i really care like right i'm gonna i'm tying foreign hands and i'm tying right. half windsors and it was like that was what 2004 five right. i'm like youtube was just starting you right, know what I mean? so right. i'm like looking up how to tie bow ties and right, things like right. that so by the time high school hit you i was knew tying. how to do yeah, it yeah, that's it. good that's good but yeah a lot of the guests say between 10 and 13 mm -hmm. i would say yeah so that's good that that people are learning at at that age. Yeah, man. Um, what I, I I'm not gonna ask this question because I know the answer. I was gonna ask you if you own a custom suit, oh, yeah. right? Yeah. Of course, yeah, just a right. couple, just right? A couple. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so um, shoes, though. Yeah. Right. So what is kind of like your you know go to shoe? My go to shoe. Mm, that's a good question. So the interesting thing is, it depends. I'm right. I'm very occasion based. Um, even right. like. It was funny getting ready for the for the show. I was like, right. you know, what do I what do I want to wear? Because right. I'm like, you know, I wear suits to work every now and then. But you know, right. like the work suit is a little different it's than when I'm stepping out suit. From a, yep. And I've been in a place lately where I've been a lot more casual. You right. know what I mean? I've been doing like shirts, like you know, t-shirts with suits. I mean, it's, right. it's August it's in New York. Yeah. You know, so when I say when I think go to shoe right now, um, it's all comfortable things. So like my Yeezys right. are fantastic. Right. Um, because they're just. You know, Kanye does a lot of things well, and he does a lot of things not so good. Right. But his like he really did what he needed to do with Yeezys, right. and they are super comfortable. They're like low enough where I can get away with them with a suit. Right. Um, they look great with jeans. Right. I also have been doing a lot of my Gucci loafers with yep. the the mules. So yep. with my heel out, I never thought I'd be a heel out kind of guy. Oh, uh, I'm still not a heel out kind of guy. Like, like I I just I can't get with it. It's, <laughs> it's like it's like the next step. If you if you are going without socks every now and right. then, it's the next step. Right. Just because it's like at a base level, not having socks on keeps your foot warm, right? right. The more area you have around your flashpoints like your ankles that right. are exposed, you're gonna be cooler. Right. So it's like when I when I that's why I made sure when I went to the flash mob, I was like, I'm gonna have this suit on. It's right. gonna be 90 degrees. Right. At least let me have my ankle. Let me let me right. let my ankles breathe. Right. You right. know, right. so it's like and they're the heels all, out. Yeah. yeah. So it's like they're super versatile. I do those with suits. I do them with jeans. Right. Um and then like I, my staple go to like if I was going like if I was leaving here for a job interview, right. I have a pair of brown double months. Yep. From Suit Supply. Literally I bought them twice. Right. Because they're that solid. Right. Um I'm kind of a shameless suit supply advocate. I used to right. like work for them part time in right. DC back in the day. Right. And their shoes are really, really solid quality. Like I have some boots, I have loafers, I have a couple pairs of monks. Right. So it's like Generally, if I'm not in Yeezys or or my Gucci my Gucci feats, I'm you, in you, my suit. I'm in suit supply. You in suit supply. Yeah. So listen, Alex, I have really enjoyed this conversation with you here today, um, and getting to know you a little better. Yeah, man. Thank you um, for so yeah, no, 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 absolutely. Like once I thought about it, I was like, no, he has to come into the show, um, and you're here. So thank you for like making time to like come into the show. Tell everybody where they can find you. Oh, absolutely. So. You can find me on Instagram at the full underscore Windsor, like the Tana. Um, I'm also on Twitter at the same handle. You can also find me at hks.style, a uh, new website coming soon. So I'm working on some blogging things. And as he mentioned in my bio, a men's consultation service. So if yeah. you, you know, are looking for that, hey, I have a formal event on Friday. I'm taking this new lady out on a date. Right. You know, it's my... It's my second cousin's wedding. We're not that close, so I'm trying to stunt. 
you right, know, right. I'm your guy. So you can find me on Instagram. All of my contact information is there. I look forward to hearing from you soon. Yes. Yeah, so I'm sure you will see Alex on Instagram, especially when these flash mob pictures Absolutely. come out. Um, you've probably seen him already with the African print suit. So Alex, thank you for being thank here. You. Thank you. My people, I hope you enjoyed this episode of the My People podcast. You can also see what we look like on the Wealthy Guys YouTube channel. You'll get to see Alex's <laughs> beard. Um, the link will be in the description. So show us some love and subscribe to the show. If you'd like to get in touch with us, you can do so on Instagram at the underscore my people underscore podcast or by email at the my people podcast at gmail.com. Again, if you enjoyed this episode, be sure to subscribe and leave us a review on your listening platform. It's The Wealthy Guy with Alex Hooks, and I'll see you soon.